Hello, I'm Atuba George and I bless God for this new week. And I'm so glad for this opportunity given to me to bring God's truth to you. Now, I don't take this for granted, you see. It is God who gives utterance and it is God who gives understanding. So as I receive utterance over here to teach and to preach what I'm sharing with you, he is bringing utterance and understanding to your own hearts. Praise God. Now, we've been talking on living the life. Now, what does it mean living the life? The life is no other life but the life of faith. And, and we've been on this for, for, for several weeks now. And we got talking about the heart. You know, we started from Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, where it says, For without faith, it is impossible to please God. So when we say living the life, we're talking about living the life that pleases God, which is a life of faith. Now then, we now got to talking about what, what is because say, without faith, it is impossible to please God. And then he that comes to God must first believe that God is. And he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Now, that's all we've been talking about all this while. Those who diligently seek him. Why will you diligently seek him? Because you believe. So, so you see, so he that comes to God must first believe that God is. And then when you believe that, you will now diligently seek him. See, it's like looking for... Um, you, you remember the story Jesus gave about the woman who lost um, a coin. And she swept everywhere trying to find that coin. You know what I'm talking about? Now, why, why would she be sweeping everywhere? Because she knows or she believes she left that coin in her house. If she, did it, if she wasn't sure she left it in the house, she wouldn't diligently sweep everywhere. Now, that's what it means. She was diligently sweeping every corner, thinking, maybe I came here. I think I, I think I walked to this part of the room. I think I opened this place. I think, and then diligently looking for something. Now, it's the same way you diligently seek the Lord. Why? Because you believe He is. Praise God. And then we, we got talking about believing. Because Romans tells us that with the heart, man believes. It is believed because now look at that Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6. The core of that scripture is in that part where it says, He that comes to God must believe. So you see that word believe. Now that's that's the root of your faith. You've got to believe, and when you believe, you seek. And when you seek, God rewards. And what does he reward with? Faith. See. You understand what I'm talking about? Praise God. Now, it's so easy to understand. Now, so we, we began to talk about what the ingredients or, or, or how do you believe. And then we got talking about the heart because Romans tells us that with the heart, man believes. So we got talking about the things that affect our belief, which is the heart, your state of your mind. Now, I won't say heart. We're not talking about the heart that pumps physical blood. We're talking about your mind, your mind. The seats of your emotions, where, where, you know, that's why we, we, we got to Proverbs, where it says, guard your heart with all diligence. Why? Because out of it are the issues of life. Out of it is your believing. If you don't guard your heart, your heart will be contaminated. And when your heart is contaminated, you can't believe anymore, praise God. Or you won't believe the right thing. There are people who believe God, but, but when you listen to what they say, they believe you like, Something is wrong with you. Someone is out there believing that God is going to one day kill all his enemies. Then his life will begin to make sense or he will begin to prosper. Something is wrong with that belief. Your heart is wrong. See? Because you don't understand God. God is not a killer. He's not going out looking for who to kill every day. Rather, he is going out to look for who to show mercy to. That's why I always tell people this. It is easier to just believe God to bless you, irrespective of the challenges that are in your life. Because 
when God wants to bless, you know what he will do? He will send his word to you. And when you get his word and believe and act on it, the blessing comes. It's as simple as no devil can stop that. The only thing the devil can do to you is tamper with your heart so you will not receive the word of God. Or when it comes, you will not understand it. Now, that's what Satan does. Now, that's why I'm taking my time to teach you all these things I've been teaching you so your hearts will be right. And thank you for all the testimonies that have been coming in so far. Praise God. So today, we're taking this a step further. Like I told you last week, we are going to get as practical as possible as the Lord will allow us. So you will really on the break this thing down to day-to-day -day living. So you don't think it's one Bible thing we're talking about. No, we're talking about your life. Praise God. So, so now I want to go on to something in, in, in line we're talking about your heart. Now, when we start talking about this, I want you to examine yourself and make the right changes where necessary. Now, let's go to Psalm, book of Psalms chapter 14 and verse 1. Psalms 14 and verse 1. He says, The fool has said in his heart. Note that word now. Where did the fool say it? Not with his mouth, in his heart. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Watch this. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none who does good. Now look at verse 2. Very, very important now. The Lord looks down from heaven upon the children of men. Now, when God says the children of men, he's talking about every human being. He's not just talking about God's children. He's not talking, talking about Christians or those who are born here. He's looking at human race in general now. So, he says, the Lord looks down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there are any who understand, who seek God. Did you get that? Now he said, a fool have said in his heart that there is no God. So because he says there is no God, he does things anyhow. And then he now said, but the Lord. And that's what it means. It's not a new statement he's making. He said, but the Lord. See, the fool is thinking there is no God. But God is looking down from heaven and he's wondering, looking at the human beings, like, does this guy, does this young lady, does this woman understand? Understand what? Understand that I am there. I'm there. Now what is God there doing? Working things out. He's, he's working things out on a daily basis. Every second, God is working things out. Working on ways to get you blessed. Working on ways to get things good going for you. Don't you understand that? So now God said, the Lord looks down from heaven upon the children of men. To see if there is any who understands. Any who seek God. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. You know, he said in Jeremiah, he says, anyone who wants to glory should glory in this, that he knows, God was speaking, he says that he knows and he understands me. Wow. So now here he says, God is looking down from heaven and he's looking out for something. Who understands God? Oh, you know, now when he says God is looking at, he's not just looking and looking and looking. Oh, let me look over Nigeria. Let me see if I'll see men that understand me. Mm, nah. Okay, okay, a few. Oh, I can see that one. I can see. No, that's not what's going on. Listen, God comes on your case. And then he throws something at you. And then he's watching to see how you respond to it. You remember the, the disciples of Jesus Christ walking with him one day? And he, he, he just said to them, wow, you know, see, walking with God is beautiful. <laughs> now, this is, what, this is just what it takes, understanding. If you don't understand God, then you're a fool. It's as simple as that. 
the opposite of a fool is the one who understands God. So Jesus was walking with his disciples one day and then he said, Beware of the leaven of the Pharisee and the Sadducee. He just said that and he kept quiet. And the disciples began to reason amongst themselves. Hmm? This thing Jesus just said. Peter, did you carry bread? No, I didn't. John, what about you? No, Andrew. Andrew, remember you're the one who asked the last time. Did you carry bread? No, I didn't carry bread. Wow. How could you have made this kind of mistake? And I'm thinking, you know, Jesus is going to ask now, how many loaves do we have? Then we don't have anything. How did we make this kind of mistake? And, and Jesus got to understand what they were thinking. And then what did Jesus say? Hey, what is wrong with you guys? He said, do you still lack understanding and he reminded them have you forgotten the five loaves and two fishes and how many baskets were left have you forgotten the four thousand and jesus was saying to them why don't you understand by now you should understand that bread is not a problem to us if we need bread, what, if, if we need to bring it out from the air, we can do it. Praise God. That, that's what he wanted them to understand. So when he threw that question at them, he demanded understanding from them, but he didn't find it. So actually, Jesus said, are you guys still fools? Lacking understanding. <laughs> Praise God. See, that's the truth. It's the same way God works with you. He will throw something at you. He will throw a situation at you. And then he's watching to see how you respond to it. Now, what's he looking out for? Men that show understanding. You know, that's why God was so pleased with Abraham. I've shared this thing with you. He said, Abraham, yes, sir. Take your son, your only son, to one of the mountains of Moriah and offer him there as a sacrifice unto me. Hmm. He was watching to see what Abraham was going to do. So, Abraham thought about it, thought about, looked at his son Isaac, examined everything God said. God said, take your son, your only son. Now, God is aware of Ishmael. See, you understand? So, so God couldn't be feigning ignorance now. But you see, he had told Abraham to send Ishmael away, that Ishmael is not the seed that he spoke about. Now he comes and says, take your son, your only son, Isaac. So God was actually saying, I know what I'm talking about. So I'm not saying take one of your sons. I'm telling you, take your only son. Now God knew why he was specific. And guess what Abraham did? Abraham began to reason it out. And like, come. You see, you see when it comes to working with God, God expects you to use your brain. Sometimes say, oh, you don't have to use your brain in this. Anybody that tells you that is lying to you. You see, because, you know, you know I, I tell people this, and, and this is the truth. Whatever transaction takes place in the realm of the spirit, if there is no willingness to accept that transaction in the physical, that transaction is null and void. Some say, oh, I had a dream. And anytime I have this dream, things used to go bad for me. Now you, you check yourself. When, when you have that dream, what do you do after that dream? If you begin to respond in fear because of that dream, you have endorsed the dream. But when you understand that, ah, uh, you see, the whole dream was to make you endorse that thing physically. To make you respond physically. You are about to get a contract and then you have that dream and then you wake up in the morning and say, ah, you know, you just, I've lost this contract. I say, why? Ah, there's this dream I used to have. Anytime I have the dream, things used to go bad for me and I just had that dream. I've lost. Now, it is not the dream that made you lose the contract. It was your mouth and that was what the dream was meant to do. Get you to confess with your mouth. Did you get that? <laughs> our time is up now I'm just thinking how, how we're going to deal with this thing now. there's so much you need to do to understand 
and walk in understanding. And I pray today that the Spirit of God is opening your understanding, that you will not be a fool. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, it is well with you this week. In Jesus' name, amen. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.